to be here today. I appreciate it is getting late, so I shall be quick. Please note the important disclaimer. Uh, despite a very challenging market environment for the oil and gas exploration and production sector, the first half of 2015 has been a very busy and extremely exciting period operationally for Rockhopper, where we have made two material discoveries uh, in the Falklands, and significantly progressed our development assets, both in the Falklands and in our second core area of the Mediterranean. Today, I'd like to give a very brief introduction to the company, an overview of our strategy, highlight our recent and forthcoming activity, and provide a snapshot of the outlook ahead. Uh, in terms of just some of the key metrics for the company, uh, we have a portfolio of production, <coughs> development, appraisal and exploration assets focused in our two core areas of the North Falkland Basin and the South Atlantic and then what we describe as the Greater Mediterranean which at the moment encompasses interests in Italy, Malta, uh, France, Croatia and uh, earlier this week we announced an acquisition uh, of production assets in Egypt. Uh, we have um, 2P and 2C reserves and resources net to the company of just under 200 million barrels of oil equivalent. Uh, we have a market capitalization of approximately $275 million. And at the end of 2014, we had a cash balance of $200 million and no debt. Um, turning first to our business model, uh, our strategy is to create value through building a well-funded, full-cycle, exploration-led EMP company. We believe we can create value through, first of all, maintaining a robust balance sheet. Secondly, building a balanced portfolio, both geographically within our two core areas, but also balanced across the life cycle, so production all the way through to exploration. And finally, by leveraging our technical skill set to target value accretive exploration in proven hydrocarbon basins. Um, this is... Uh, for those less familiar with the company, a sort of potted history, which I won't go through um, in detail, but, but in effect, Rockhopper was the first company to make a commercial oil discovery in the Falklands back in 2010. Through a drilling campaign spanning almost two years, between 2010 and 2012, the company, on a 100% basis, discovered and fully appraised the 400 million barrel sea lion oil field and the adjacent discoveries. Uh, in 2012, we sold out a 60% interest and the operatorship of Sea Lion to Premier Oil, which is a FTSE 250 uh, listed oil and gas company in the UK, for total consideration of a billion dollars. Now, that comprised some cash up front of about $230 million and the balance in exploration and development carries for future activity on the licenses. So as a result of that transaction, Rockhopper now has 40% of Sea Lion with a contingent resource net to the company of approximately 150 million barrels. In 2014, uh, the board took a strategic decision that we should add a second core area to our business. Um, given the experience within the board and the management team, we focused in on the Mediterranean and uh, in 2014, we acquired an AIM-listed company called Mediterranean Oil and Gas, uh, which added a further 32 million barrels of contingent resources, primarily in, in Italy. And as I said, on Monday of this week, we announced the acquisition of a portfolio of mainly production assets in Egypt as part of this continuation of our strategy to build a full-cycle company with a greater emphasis um, not just on exploration, but also on production, so that we can build a self-funding, self-sustaining, long-term business. Uh, here I've set out um, the activity schedule for 2015-2016. Um, the schedule is, of course, dominated by our four 
uh, well high impact exploration campaign in the Falklands, which commenced in February time. Uh, well, as I said, we have made two very material oil discoveries so far, and we're drilling a further two wells, probably Jane and Chatham, in September, October time of this year. Um, on sea line, we continue to make progress um, towards a financial investment decision with the award of FEED, which is the detailed front-end engineering and design work. Um, those contract awards uh, round about September time of this year uh, with a view to submit a draft field development plan to the Falkland Island government around the year end. Clearly, the current uh, oil price environment does create challenges for large-scale offshore um, development projects. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we believe that um, with a fall in the oil price, there is scope to reduce costs, to um, regain margin, and for projects with robust economics in attractive jurisdictions from a fiscal terms perspective like the Falklands, we believe there is scope for projects like that to be sanctioned even in a low oil price environment. Um, in the MED, we look forward to commencing first gas from our rock hopper operated Chavita uh, gas development. Uh, Gwendolina is um, our major source of revenue today. We will look to drill a sidetrack well commencing later this month with a view to doubling our production out of Gwendolina by the end of this year. And then on the exploration side, um, we've recently extended our uh, exploration study area in Malta. In Croatia, we've recently been awarded uh, an exploration block in partnership with the Italian company ENI, which is the leading um, uh, oil company in that part of the Adriatic. And then, as I say, um, we announced on Monday our Egyptian deal, which will bring with it almost immediately um, sustained uh, drilling activity um, to, to support our pipeline of um, projects moving forward. Um, I'll just go through each part of the business uh, one by one. In terms of the North Falkland Basin, this is a picture of Stanley. Um, focus first of all on Sea Lion, which is the main development project. In November of last year, in response to dramatic fall in the global price of oil, the joint venture announced um, uh, a reduced <coughs> project focusing really in on the northeast corner of the field um, and, a and a phased approach to development really to minimise the upfront capital costs. So we were previously looking at what we call the tension leg platform, which was a $4 billion uh, capex, four to $5 billion capex program, which would monetize the full 400 million barrels that we have in sea line. Because of the oil price, uh, we've moved to a phased development targeting just the northeast corner of the field um, with an aim to commercialize about 160 million barrels over a 15-year life. That will involve about 14 development wells. We've moved the capex up front from about 4 to 5 billion down to about 1.8 billion. And actually, because of the um, market dynamics with the oil price, we actually see significant scope to further reduce costs. So by way of example, about a third of that 1.8 billion of capex is drilling costs, and we have already seen drilling uh, rig rates fall by 30, 40, 50 percent since November. So there is a material scope for further cost savings. Um, in terms of the um, immediate time timeline, um, we will be spending, as a joint venture, $70 million on pre-feed activity through 2015. We're looking to award the feed contracts uh, during Q3 of this year, so September, possibly into early October. And we remain, at this point, on target for sanctioning the project during the second half of 2016. Um, in terms of expiration, maybe I'll just skip through. This slide provides uh, a summary of all four of the wells that we are drilling in the 2015 exploration campaign. Uh, we have already drilled Zebedee, which is bottom left, and we've already drilled Isabel Deep, bottom right. Both of those uh, were 
successful oil discoveries. In Zebedee, we've probably found between 75 and 100 million barrels of oil. And in Isabel, which was probably the largest target in this campaign, we, um, we penetrated the reservoir, but we only managed to get about a third of the way through the sand body before we encountered operational issues. Um, nonetheless, what we have discovered is there is oil, there is trap, it's a high quality reservoir, and it has significantly de-risked a complex of prospects which have the potential to be larger than what we've already discovered in Sea Lion. So this Isabel Deep and the Greater Isabel Complex has the potential to be a game changer for us. The next two wells, well I should say the rig is currently drilling for Noble Energy in the south of the Falklands and we expect the rig to be handed back to the premier rock hopper joint venture um, in early September where we will most likely be drilling the Jane East well first which is top right um, moving on to Chatham. Chatham is an interesting well because it's not just exploration there is also an appraisal element to sea lion and if the appraisal element comes in we have automatically added between 60 and 65 million barrels um, to what we have already found at sea lion as well as the deeper exploration target um, at Chatham. Now this campaign, these, these wells cost about $50 million gross each well. So the whole campaign is in the order of $200 million. Um, we have an equity interest in these between 40 and 24%. But because, we, um, because of the deal that we struck with Premier back in 2012, Premier are actually paying the vast majority of our costs on this campaign. So our net exposure to the whole programme is about $25 million or about $6 million per well. And as I say, two out of two so far have been successful, which we are immensely proud of. Um, moving on to the Mediterranean, this is a picture of the Gwendolina platform. As I say, Gwendolina is our uh, main source of revenue today, providing us with between three and $4 million of, of revenue per, per year. And we expect to double that over the next, um, well, in, in 2016, we expect to have double that, that level of revenue. Um, this is just a snapshot of the Italian portfolio. Um, we've talked about Gwendolina. E and I operated Sidetrack Well um, in August, September, where we expect to double current production. Uh, Umbrina Mare is a project that we operate on 100% basis. Umbrina Mare is located just offshore uh, in the central Adriatic, uh, there is already discovered 25 to 40 million barrels of recoverable oil. That project has been wrapped up in um, permitting and environmental issues with the Italian government for quite some time. Um, we were very pleased that to announce on Monday that um, we now have two of the three required signatures in order to move that project into a production concession. Production concession is a major milestone in being able to commercialise that field. So we're not there yet. There is further risk around it, but nonetheless we are seeing material progress on the permitting side, along with other companies in the oil and gas space operating in Italy like Sound Oil and uh, Northern and others. Uh, Monte Grosso is... Um, an exploration uh, prospect that we operate with a 23% working interest. Um, that prospect is estimated to contain over 200 million barrels. And I am told it is the largest remaining undrilled prospect uh, onshore Western Europe. And it is absolutely on trend with uh, Valdagri and Temporossa, which are two of the largest onshore oil fields um, in Western Europe. Uh, Assuming we can get the permitting unlocked, we would like to drill Monte Grosso uh, during 2017. And then finally, Chivita, which is the small uh, onshore gas project operated by Rock Hopper. Uh, we're expecting first gas uh, back end of this year. Very briefly, we recently participated in the first Croatian offshore licensing round. Um, we were able to partner up with ENI, who over the course of the last year, we've built a very good relationship. E&I are clearly 
uh, a major operator in Italy and, and the wider uh, Adriatic. So we were very pleased to partner with them. In Croatia, we've got minimal work commitment, um, some 3D seismic in the first phase, a couple of million uh, euros over a three to four year period. Um, and ultimately, we're targeting um, shallow gas prospects uh, in that block, um, low drilling costs, very easy to tie into um, ENI infrastructure, which just sits into the in the Italian side of the maritime border. So actually, very low cost, um, quick to market type prospects, um, which we believe um, could be very profitable. Um, moving on to Egypt, um, just a, a, a short overview. Um, we we um, we saw an opportunity, um, really because of the oil price, um, to acquire some pretty attractive uh, assets uh, at good valuation. So what we've done here is we've added about 1,300 barrels of oil equivalent per day production net to rock copper, increasing our group production to between 1,600 and 18 BOE per day. We've added 4.5 million barrels of oil equivalent uh, at a net cost of less than four and a half dollars per barrel. So by any metric to buy already producing barrels, um, we, we, were very, we were very pleased with um, the price that we were able to, to get. And this deal was really about, as I said before, continuing the strategy, building that second core area, um, focusing on um, opportunities that had limited ca uh, capital commitments, provided a bit of downside protection to the oil price, but also allowed, I think most importantly, to put us in a position where, in order to keep running the business, we weren't continuing to eat into our cash balance. So this, the production from the Egyptian portfolio, plus what we already have in Italy, now means that we are self-financing in terms of covering all of the company's overhead. So if we want to make capital investment decisions, that will come out of capital, but in terms of running the business on a day-to-day -day basis, that will be funded by, out of revenues, which I think is all about um, building a sustainable business, particularly in a challenging oil price environment. Um, the two assets we bought, um, the main one was uh, Abu Sanan, where we have a minority interest. Uh, the operator is Kuwait Energy, who is a, 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 has interests across Egypt. Um, very well connected politically and in country, um, active drilling program. So we, it's very much a typical onshore oil uh, project. Um, you get um, good paybacks, uh, very quick um, paybacks, low operating costs, um, cheap to drill. You can drill wells here for about uh, five million dollars gross. We're at 22 percent, so you're talking just over a million dollars per well. Um, good recoveries out of these, actually good fiscal terms. And then um, El Car Plain is a very early stage uh, exploration um, license. We're only in the second phase of that. We're looking at um, shooting from 3D seismic activity probably uh, later this year or early next. Uh, in terms of the, the transaction terms and metrics, it was a headline $22 million acquisition around about 50% cash, 50% in shares. Um, most importantly, the cash element is funded off the balance sheet. Um, and even post-transaction, we will have net cash uh, at the end of 2015 of between 110 and $120 million. So the balance sheet remains robust. In terms of the share element, um, that will be priced off our share price at the time of completion. Um, but if you use today's share price, you'd expect dilution to our shareholders of about 3 to 4%. And even in a downside case, uh, we'd be looking at maximum dilution of 5% for our shareholders. Transaction is expected to close later this year or early next, subject to standard, um, standard terms and preemption and partner consents. In terms of funding, cash at the balance sheet... Um, End of 14 was $200 million. Uh, we've talked a bit about the cost of the Falkland Wells, but given we're, car we're carried by Premier to a large extent, we are also carrying a junior partner, Falkland Oil and Gas. The net cost to Rock Copper for that entire campaign is about $25 million. We'll be spending about the same again, progressing the engineering work on Sea Line. 
uh, and then we're making capital investments in the Med of between 5 and 10 million on the Gwendolina side track and the small Chavita onshore development. Um, in terms of Sea Line itself, once we um, sanction that project, we will be funded by Premier Oil for the first 337 million. And then on top of that, we have a loan to Premier, uh, from Premier rather, of up to $750 million. So, you know, we, we, um, we are full, fully funded through the Sea Line development, irrespective of capital markets, um, irrespective of, of, of banking markets. So really just to round up, um, in summary, a difficult industry backdrop for the oil sector. Um, nonetheless, of the things that you can control, we think we are uh, we're doing a good job at, at trying to take the projects forward, finding more oil, um, putting a greater emphasis on production and cash flow um, in what we see as quite a difficult and challenging market for smaller companies and therefore leveraging our or utilising our balance sheet to take advantage of um, value and cash flow accretive opportunities. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any questions, anybody? Um, you say that the um, Isabel Deep needs further appraisal. When are you planning to do that? Um, we are... We're in the process of permitting an Isabel Deep um, exploration well, which we would like to have the option to drill in this campaign. Uh, clearly, it relies on partner consent, partner approval. Um, it also relies on figure approval. So we are maintaining full flexibility. Um, as a joint venture, I think we're still in our mind, we will only drill two more wells in the North Falkland Basin and Chatham will certainly be one of them. So it will be a decision at the right time with all the partners, should we drill Jane or should we drill an appraisal well on Isabel? And at this point, we, we simply haven't made a decision. But so we're, Not we're, any time soon then? Uh, well, it's possible we could add it onto this campaign. Um, any more questions, anybody? Oh, well, you've gone into Egypt, another political hot potato for some companies. Centimene have had problems getting money out to the country. Yeah. How do you see your position? You're obviously going to be a producer in Egypt. I know cash flow is not an issue for you. You clearly have cash. You can, I presume, wait yeah. to be paid. Is that uh, how you see it? Um, I mean, clearly, um, receivables out of EGPC are, um, are one of the key due diligence items on the deal. Um, I mean, look. Receivable balances are getting better. People are getting paid. You're generally less than 90 days over, overdue. Um, this business that we've just bought or in the process of buying had a receivables balance of less than a million dollars at the beginning of the year. Because we've had a ramp up in production, the receivable balance has moved up, but it's still sitting at around about $3 million in May. So it's, you know, it's, it's there, it's a concern, um, but actually I think the team on the ground are actually very good at getting paid. The business continues to receive between two hundred and fifty and three hundred and fifty thousand dollars per month out of EGPC. So it's manage it's a manageable risk and one that we knew we were we were getting into. And as you say, I think we have the balance sheet, which means that we can weather um, you know sort of short term fluctuations in working capital. And with all this capital, obviously you've got requirements for the Falklands other areas. Are you looking to acquire? More assets in the Mediterranean? Um, when we bought Mediterranean oil and, ga oil and gas a year ago, we were clear we wanted to do more. Um, I think we've taken a pretty um, hard line when looking at acquisitions. Um, uh, we've probably looked at a dozen or more opportunities over the last 12 months. We will continue to look, but we're always very focused on um, value, um, minimal work commitments, strong cash generation, downside oil price protection. So we will continue to, we'll continue to evaluate, but um, we're taking an opportunistic approach. Not travelling anywhere nice in the next few weeks? Only on holiday to Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> ah. That's not for work. <laughs> go to, go look at gold mine whilst yeah. you're there. <laughs> um, any other any questions, anybody? No, thank you very much, Stuart. Thank Thanks a lot. <laughs>